Hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and I'm going to be very gentle and sensitive with this video because it's criticism. And there is a chance that the person that I'm talking about will recognize uh, what his behavior has been like. And I'm just using it to illustrate a simple point. We're all artists. We've been told from the time that we decided to be performers, you're special. You have a unique perspective. You hear things and see things and grok things that other people don't. You have the ability to do things that other people don't have. You march to the beat of a different drummer. And when you do that and you're successful at it, you get rewarded. You're not working in an office somewhere. You're not working a blue collar job. You're doing voiceover or you're doing on camera or I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're doing something that's out of the ordinary. I doubt you'd be watching this video if you weren't. So um, I'm a member of a Facebook group that uh, deals with uh, connections and and um, group think and functioning. It's, it's a way for me to understand how people communicate with each other. And one of the people in the group is a songwriter. And he's definitely an artist. He's definitely, like everything it seems like, and maybe not everything, but it seems like almost everything he posts is a question as to why can't it be like this? So, for example, one of the things that he asked in the group was, hey, I want to teach songwriting. What if I go to all these songwriting groups and as people post, I go to their profile and I see if they have an email address in their profile on Facebook and I send them a note saying, hey, I'm going to teach this songwriting course and I would love to have you and come join my group and all that stuff. And I said, that's called spamming. You know, it's called harvesting emails. It's against terms of service on Facebook. And he said, oh, then you're in favor of Mark Zuckerberg charging us to tell people what we're up to. And I'm like, no, that's that has nothing to do with it. All the all the social media networks have anti-harvesting rules in their terms of service. You can't you can't go on LinkedIn and you know when you connect with somebody, grab their their email addresses and put them on a mailing list. You can, but it's against terms of service. You physically can, but but in terms of the regulations on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Tumblr, uh, Facebook, uh, I, my site, it's on my site. You can't. You're not allowed to harvest. You come, you come on my site. You start grabbing people's email addresses. I'll kick you off the site. So, I I wrote back and I said, no, it's not Mark Zuckerberg. It's everybody. It's not just Mark Zuckerberg. And his response to me was, okay, that's your opinion. I want to hear what somebody else has to say. And nobody else responded. Now, it may be that he has worn out his welcome in the group and they don't feel like engaging with him. Um, when he posts something, it's always, how do I gently break the rules and be a rebel? And, and you know, it's, it's look, I get it. He's an artist. He's been rewarded for thinking outside the box. And he has his own path. I mean, some of the things that... Anyway, the point is, I it struck me that it might be helpful to mention that with all the good things that come with being an artist, sometimes what also shows up is a blind spot. And that blind spot is often to common sense, conventional wisdom, things that are tried and true, because we say to ourselves, look, I'm an artist. And if I'm an artist, the rules don't apply to me. I can go in the artist's entrance. I get a crafts table with food on it for me. I get free tickets. I get, I get privilege. I get rewarded for being a little eccentric and a little, you know, unique. But when common sense shows up, it's worth taking a look at, even if you are an artist. No matter what was presented, it didn't seem to make sense to him. Mark Zuckerberg was the evil devil. Uh, I was, you know, uh, just one voice in a sea of 
of of cacophony and he wanted to hear somebody else's opinion okay that's fine and i think the reason that they haven't been posting is because they don't want to engage this guy so the question is is your approach to art your approach to being an artist is it in any way shape or form preventing you from moving forward from being successful one of the most common ways it does it is it tends to because art and commerce are often at opposing uh, uh, heads with each other, it tends to make us think that being successful, having money, um, uh, being popular is a bad thing for an artist, that an artist has to be struggling or else their art will suffer. And, you know, I can tell you that there's 100% of the A-listers out there would disagree with you. And yet those are the people that are the most popular with the public. So... I guess the message here is I love that everyone is unique and everyone is hearing that drummer off in the distance and marching in their own way to it. But watch what's in front of you, watch what's behind you, watch what's on either side, as well as listening to that drummer so that you can stay safe, so that you can feel love and be loved. Um, I, I want you to succeed. And sometimes being an artist can get in the way. How do you tell those things apart? Maybe we'll talk about that in a, in a different video. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd really like to know. Uh, if you're on voheroes.com, just pop down below this video. You'll see the comments area. Love to hear what you have to say. If you want to join my list, there's another box further down the bottom of the page that says get on the list. Go ahead and join it. And we'd be happy to have you on our mailing list so that you can... and we're not looking for you to harvest any addresses. I'm not harvesting any ad addresses. You do it all on your own volition, right? Okay. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow.